Okay, so uh, right now I'm going to show you uh, the relationship between the Bobcat MT100 and uh, this load trail, four foot sides, low pro dump trailer. Seventy-eight and a half inches in the rear because of the slope. Seventy-five and a half inches at the front. So I'm guessing on a flat surface we'd be somewhere closer to 77 inches. The bed is right around 27 inches off the ground. Um, the ramp kind of is about a half inch below that. Okay, the ramp is 80 inches long. It's not the relevant number, but for comparison purposes, you'll know the length of the ramp in relation to the drop from the rear of the trailer are the two numbers that you can easily measure. It is 100% recommended against to load a machine with the heavy side down. But I've done it and I can tell you it is terrifying. Do not, do not do this, especially if you're like me and you're new. Better to just play it safe. If you set up to where if it tips, the, the bucket or the implement will catch you. That is how you should always be driving. I'm gonna show you a way around that problem with this machine, this is pretty awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and load this machine properly the way it's supposed to be done and then I'll show you some other stuff. Again, that, that slope is 0.373333. I think you probably saw me sliding. Um, remember, these are real-world conditions. Bobcat doesn't just get driven when the weather is nice. So, you know, all this talk of, oh, look, it can do this, it can do that. I'm a stunt man. That's great. You're a stunt man. Whatever. But here's the thing: I was able to get that machine up safely with slick mud all over everything. I mean, when I got to that top where that gets smooth, um, it would not bite. Now, on my on my flatbed trailer, I had this problem with my other tractor. It's an older tractor. And when I would back, I had to back it on because that's where the, the weight was or whatever. But um, as I would as I would back onto the trailer, my wheels would be spinning. And so I took uh, expanded steel and I just welded strips of that up there, and it was able to bite much better. And you could do that on this. I mean, this is steel, so it's possible. And all it needs is a couple spot welds. Grind off a little uh, paint, put a couple spot welds, uh, put some expanded steel right there, and now you got a nice bitey, grippy surface. But the top of these ramps that came with this trailer are slick and smooth and uh, you know it, it probably uh, as a track machine it struggles a little bit more with traction on that slope because that comes up and then that's balanced on that point. Um, but I'm going to demonstrate now how it's possible to turn around inside the trailer with this machine. So this trailer is 82 and a half inches inside space. Um, so that's pretty exact. So 
Uh, I don't remember what the specs are on the Bobcat, but obviously it's contained within that. Now, if you have a load in this and you want to turn around, remember that you're turning that thing around at the tail end. Uh, and I have done that because I was loading and I, I wanted to get back out and I was too scared to back up off these ramps. I have backed up off these ramps, but it was in a situation where uh, the trailer was, was tilted such that the rear end of the, uh, of the uh, trailer was actually lower to the ground and it changed the slope. And so it wasn't mu as much of a rock back um, and I was able to back it up, but only experimentally. I'm not even gonna do it today, I'm too scared. I, I would never do that unless I have a very heavy implement or a big load on the Bobcat in front of me. As you can see, it's a piece of cake coming down. When it tilts, you know that bucket will stop it from falling. And also, you're on the high side, so if it goes wrong, you can take a dive and it won't hurt you. You just judge which direction it's gonna go and go the other way. Uh, I wanna show you what this machine does on a slope if the parking brake is not on. Now, let me show you the parking brake to give you some reassurance. This handle right here activates. All you do is just release them and then this pin, let me see if I can find the pin. This big pin right here pops out. This thing is massive, and it blocks off the teeth on this sprocket right here. So you cannot roll with that, okay? So this is just ordinary transport chain. These are my Columbus McKinnon chain binders. These are the only one that you can find made in the USA. Okay. I'm sure a lot of guys are probably wondering if the Bobcat can move the dump trailer. So I'm going to move it for you today. it's got like this shape to it. So um, it just kind of always interacts with whatever you're trying to process. So, um, but as far as the bucket, you know, obviously then you'd be having trouble getting like a corner in and you have to tilt the bucket a certain way, but it is possible if you're clever and you can do it, you can do it. So let me load this machine now and I'm gonna try to lift it with the jack on this trailer. See, I almost couldn't get up those ramps. I was sliding sideways. I either had to, I either had to go up or jump off. So I just went up and I slid to the side. There must be a slight slope or something that I didn't see there. But I'm gonna chain this bugger down and uh, try lifting it with the with the crank. promises to lift 10,000 pounds. Let's see what it can do.
You can see the trailer is up off the ball and the machine is still in there, okay? So, hope that answers that question for you. Now that is uh, pretty much all I have to offer you on the relationship between a load trail, four foot sides, low pro dump trailer, and uh, the MT100 from Bobcat. Uh, I've had a good experience with this combination. I've been able to load a partial load in the dump trailer and still park the MT100 in there. This is a 16 foot dump trailer. And uh, if you have a shorter dump trailer than this, you're gonna have a hard time carrying any sort of a load with the machine. Um, you know, you can build a load around it by hand, but as far as loading it with the machine, remember that you're stuck with uh, driving up and then either driving down dangerously or turning around in there, and you need a certain amount of room to turn around safely. Um, it's really not a good idea to turn around a machine like that behind the axle, I, I wouldn't risk it. It's too close to the edge, too many mistakes could happen and you'd just be in trouble. You'd have to call a crane or something to rescue you. I don't know what you'd do. But uh, I do well with these two things. I load this trailer up all the way. Uh, when you have wood pieces and logs that need to go up there, sometimes you just you tip grab them like that. Instead of having them inside the grapple, um, when you tip grab them, you let them go and they just fall because they're outside of the... The, the grapple area because when you can't you can't tilt that thing down unless you're all the way up like hinge pin all the way up to the sides it's not high enough to tilt down above the trailer like that so um, you're tilting down inside the trailer but the grapple is able to do a tremendous amount of that and if you don't have the grapple then it wouldn't be able to load quite as high uh, of a load um, which probably wouldn't matter as much because things that you'd be loading with a bucket would be much heavier um, but I have really enjoyed using these things together. I mean, the, the trailer comes with a, a ramp that's basically, uh, uh, it's a ramp and nothing more. Uh, it doesn't offer you any sort of traction. You know, a lot of times ramps will have like some sort of a punched out sort of traction area that's punched and it's got sharp edges to it and something like that. You wouldn't have any slippage whatsoever. But when you get to that top peak, that peak and you're driving over that and, and tipping into the trailer like this, uh, that's a situation where you want to be conscious of wetness and slipperiness. And uh, you know, I wanted to show you guys this anyway uh, on a day when it wasn't ideal. Full load of wood is much heavier than this Bobcat as well. So um, this is a comfortable load to pull. I would say that the Dodge, uh, you know, the 24 valve appreciates this load without uh, being scared of it and uh, it definitely handles fine. Um, so I, I, would I want to pull this with like a gasser? Pro probably not, but uh, maybe if it was a manual, um, I'd be fine with pulling it with a manual, but uh, the, the load, yeah, it just it's kind of like going up a level because I have to have all those chains in there and then I'll have a load and I have to pull the chains out and then I have to put them back if it's really dry, I won't use the chains, but it was so slippery today, I just felt like it was going to slide. As soon as I hit the brakes, that machine was going to slide across the trailer, and I mean, as fast, as easy as it was sliding before. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video, and I uh, hope it's been helpful to you, and uh, you were able to learn some information that you needed to know. All right? Good luck out there.